Hello everybody, it's Verda here and today I'm bringing you the No Nonsense Ultimate 7 Days to Die Performance Guide. The goal of this guide is not only to help you improve the performance of your game, but also to show you a visual comparison of what each setting does and how much performance impact each setting has, so that you can make your own informed decision as to which settings you want to use and which ones you don't want to use, so that your game can still look fantastic while also having much better performance. For this guide, I've gone ahead and made this picture here for you so you can take a screenshot of it to refer to later. As for the rest of the video i'm going to be giving you a visual demonstration between the lowest setting and the highest setting for each individual setting here as well as giving you my input on each individual setting here as we go through the video so if that sounds good to you Let's get on with it. So starting things off, having AA on the highest settings compared to having it turned off, I only saw a decrease in FPS by around 2.5%. Definitely leave this one turned on. This particular scenario here, you can't really see the quality improvement of the AA, but do rest assured that it definitely does increase the quality of the game substantially in most scenarios. It just, this particular room, you can't really see it that well because it's so dark due to the shadows. Next up, we got texture quality, where I saw a difference of around 3.75%, going from lowest settings to the maximum settings. And more importantly, I saw my VRAM allocation to the game go up by around 2.3 gigabytes here at 1080p. Do note that that will be higher for 1440p and 4K. And once again, because the room is so dark, you can't really see the quality difference between the two settings here. But do be assured that it is a huge difference. This setting also affects items in your hands, such as your guns and your tools and stuff. It really does reduce the quality of the textures of those items as well, so just do bear that in mind. Texture filter reduced my FPS by around 3.75%. It really wasn't that much of a drastic quality increase here going from the lowest settings to the highest settings. Reflection quality reduced my FPS by quite a substantial amount, around 11% on average depending on the scenario. And as you can see there is a huge difference between having it on the highest settings compared to the lowest settings. I saw no difference in FPS for the reflected shadows having them on or off. There was a slight visual difference but other than that I didn't see any differences in the performance. And now we're on to the biggest culprit for the FPS loss in 7 Days to Die, that is the shadow quality. And you can see going from Ultra Plus down to having shadows off, I saw a difference in FPS of around 100% on average. So yes, double FPS. I've been saying this for ages, just turn shadows down or just turn it off. It is the biggest performance killer in the game. Next up, we've got a setting that is directly tied to shadow quality, and that is shadow distance. And the reason why it's directly tied to it is because if you have shadow quality turned off, this setting will do nothing. It has to have shadow quality turned on in order for this to affect performance or give you any visual quality difference. And having this from the lowest settings to the highest settings, I saw an FPS difference of around 7.5%. And in my opinion, this is one of the settings that if you're going to have this turned on, just turn it on to low. It really doesn't affect the shadows distance a whole lot, and it does reduce your FPS by quite a bit bit at the higher settings so just definitely have this one on low or just turn it off it doesn't really do that much for you having bloom enabled reduced my fps by around one percent so really not a whole lot and honestly it's personal preference if you want to have this on or off all it does is makes lights a little bit more bright around the light basically it doesn't really do that much this next setting is my guilty pleasure in 7 Days to Die. I've always had this turned on even when I had performance issues on previous PCs and it is SSAO. As you can see, having this turned on reduced my FPS by about 7.5%. And the reason why I like to have this setting enabled is because it's less intensive than shadow quality. And so inside of POIs that I need to turn shadows off or shadow quality off, I can still leave this one on and I still get some nice shadows without that massive performance hit essentially. Having SS reflection set to ultra compared to having them turned off, I saw a reduction in FPS by about 15%, though there is quite a notable visual quality difference here with the lighting reflections that are on the textures. I changed location to show you the next setting, which is object quality. Now having this set to ultra compared to having it set to lowest, I saw an FPS decrease of around 3.5%, though I would say leave this one at medium at least if you can, because this setting reduces the render distance of all the lootable items and other miscellaneous items and cars and so on. And so you definitely want to have this one a little bit higher than low, as it will make finding loot and just playing the game a little bit more tedious as you won't be able to see where the loot is essentially as easy. So for me low distance had no performance differences and I also couldn't see the visual difference in the setting either. Next up we've got particle effects and for me the difference between 100% particles and 0% was only around 1% FPS loss. Though do take this with a grain of salt because it's very difficult to benchmark the particle effects in 7 Days to Die as every scenario is different. To play it safe I would say just set this to 0. It really doesn't improve the quality of the game that much. Though it does reduce your FPS by a drastic amount if you've got a bunch of zombies bleeding for example or if you have a late game horde base that has a bunch of electric fence posts electrocuting zombies that will reduce FPS a lot as well so definitely just turn this one to zero percent and just save on fps basically 
Next up, we have a setting that caught me by surprise as to how intensive it actually is, and that is terrain quality. Going from the lowest settings to the ultra settings, I saw an FPS reduction of around 9% for this setting. Next up we have view distance and for me between the low and high settings I saw a difference of around 2.5% FPS and I do apologise because you can't see the difference here in the settings. You do have to be a little bit elevated usually to be able to see the difference in this setting. Next up we have mesh distance which is found under the dynamic mesh options. And going from the lowest setting, which is 100, to the highest setting, which is 2000, I saw an FPS decrease of around 22%, which might sound like a huge decrease in FPS, though this is one of the settings that will drastically improve the quality of your game. You can literally see the difference in the visual quality here. You can see the map from much further away, and I would say at minimum set this to 500 if you can. So for water quality, I saw an FPS reduction of around 9% going from the low settings to the high settings for this. This performance loss will fluctuate depending on the size of the body of water that you're currently playing around or currently looking at. So do bear that in mind that bigger lakes will be more intensive than smaller ponds of water essentially with this setting. For grass distance, I saw an FPS reduction from the lowest settings to the high settings of around 6.8%. And for the final setting here, it's not a setting in the menu, it is a console command. And if you don't know how to do this, on PC, you press F1, you type trees in, and then it will turn the trees off for you. And to enable the trees again, you just do it again, you press F1 and type trees, and it will re-enable the trees. And the performance difference between having trees turned on and off is going to vary massively depending on how many trees are in the area. As you can see, when I was in the forest, I got an FPS increase of around 23%, which is huge. Huge, but then when I was inside of the wasteland inside of a tier 5 POI where there's a lot less trees around in the wasteland city I only saw an FPS increase of around 1% in that scenario So it will fluctuate a massive amount depending on how many trees are actually in the area Though it is a useful command to know to get extra FPS if you need it in certain scenarios Such as if you have a massive tree farm back at your base That's causing a lot of performance issues if you're not ready to harvest the trees You can just turn trees off when you're playing around your base and that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully this helped you to understand what the settings do in 7 Days to Die and the performance impact that they have on the game. And hopefully with this guide you'll know which settings you want to either reduce or turn off to increase your performance while still maintaining good visual quality in the game. I've been Verda, thanks for checking out the video. Leave a like if you found any use. And until next time, take care of yourselves and goodbye for now.